Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's all stand in the house and begin our service today. And let's just give him the praise that, that our God desires of us. Let's just let him know that we love him and that we appreciate him and that we're here to serve him.
Let's put our hands together in the house this morning. What a God, what a mighty God we serve. Come on, everybody, just lift your voice and magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Worthy, Lord, are you. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord this morning. Couldn't help but thinking. I wrote this down the other day. I was studying some things out on a little Bible study and Isaiah 12 and 3 came into play, Brother David, and it says, With joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. I looked up what salvation meant, and it literally translates into Yeshua. That's Jesus. So with water, are you going to draw wells out of Jesus? And I begin to look at the scripture and it says, Jesus answered and he said unto her, if thou knewest, this is the woman at the well, she thought she was just going to get a drink. Life was all jacked up, messed up. She was going in the middle of the day when no other woman was there because she was dealing with a lot of things in her life. She didn't even want to go. But she went. And that's where Jesus met her at the well. And he said, if you knew who it was that was asking of you, you would now, I wouldn't be asking you for a drink, but you would be asking me, Brother Terrence, for a drink. And the Bible says in John 37 and, and 39, it says, In the last days, the great friend of the, the friend of the feast said, And Jesus stood and cried unto them and said, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. If you knew who it was that you was asking in the house this morning, and who you was worshiping, then you would praise him and magnify him because out of your belly is going to flow rivers of living water a water that's never going to stop when we praise him and magnify him and lift him up and give him glory brother shannon something begins to happen in the atmosphere because i am praising the king of kings and the lord of lords and i'm glad to be in the house of the lord this morning i want to draw from a well that's never going to stop when I'm thirsty in the middle of the day and I get a drink, guess what? Pretty soon I'm going to be thirsty again. But if I learn to call upon Him, I'm never going to thirst again. Amen. And guess what? Somebody else is going to get a blessing because of me, Brother Kevin. Because I'm going to allow God to use me. Amen. If you have the ways to give on the board this morning, we have Giblify and PayPal available at riverbendependentcoastals.com. You can send your cash and checks to be mailed to Riverbend Pentecostals, P.O. Box 477, New Madrid, Missouri, 63869. We also have the text to give, which is 833-883-9311. We have the ways to give this morning. We have the old traditional ways. Sister Meredith has labeled them, so you won't be confused about how to do this, but the tithing are the ones closest to the pulpit. The offering is going to be on the outside. 
everybody will, can we stand in the house this morning and pray this prayer with some authority and some faith, believing God is going to do exactly what he said. Upon the authority of your word I have given, and it shall be given unto me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I'm a tither, and I give my offerings, and I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken, and I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and incomes, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprise, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received. My whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessings. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen. God bless you. Come and give with what God has blessed you with this morning. Just getting started. I hit a wall. You just walk through. I face a mountain. You are the maker. So it's God. I'm out of faith. You are still faithful. I'm at my worst, you are still good. All of my questions, you are the answer. It all points to you. You're the God of the breakthrough. When I'm breaking down, you'll be working away through. And there's no way. You're still on your throne, so whatever feeling, still got a reason to pray, 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 still got a reason to pray. Out of all
you to leave God is the same things that's going to cause you to cleave to God. The pain, the hurt, the, the things that come against you, the things that cause you to leave God are the same things that's going to draw you back. But it's your decision to make. I said it's your decision to make. It's my decision to make of how I react to it. The song says he's a God of the breakthrough. When I'm breaking down, he's behind the scenes working for me. He's behind the scenes reaching for me and pulling for me. Sister Dana, I gotta want it. I gotta want it. It's up to me. It's up to you this morning. Amen. We're gonna go to the Lord in prayer this morning. If you have a need in your life, just make it known by the raising of your hand. He knows all things. He knows everything. So let's take these things before the Lord this morning. Let's pray earnestly for Him. These things will come to pass. Lord, we love you. God, we thank you, Lord. We ask you, Lord, that your will will be done this morning, God. Lord, you see this and never with these needs in this room, God. Lord, you see those that need a healing in this room, God, you took those stripes for our healing, God, and we claim it right now in Jesus' name. 
We claim it right now in Jesus' name. It's been promised to us, God. We claim it in your name, Lord, that prodigal Lord, our child, our grandchildren, God, those that have walked away, God. We believe, God, they're coming back, Lord. We believe, Lord, that you're drawing them back, God, and they're going to give their heart and their life back to you, God. We pray, Lord, for the backslide of God. We pray for those that don't know you this morning, God. Lord, that you would draw them, Lord, that you would bring them back, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
If you're willing and able, I'd like for you to stand, turn your Bibles, your devices to Acts the 17th chapter, verses 1 through 4. Thank you for coming today. I'd like to greet all of our guests, tell you that we're happy that you're here. Uh, we're better because you're here. Yes. To all those that are watching with us online, you've honored us by participating, by tuning in. We'd like to let you know that it's way better here than it is online. So if you enjoy watching online, just show up. The power of the Holy Ghost is rich and real, pertinent, meaning wherever you're at, whatever you need, that's what he is. Amen? Uh, we've, uh, we've been going in this service for 27 minutes. We'll make that 28 minutes. We won't be here long. All things considered, if I preach like I normally do, we won't be here long. God came into this place today to transform your perspective. He's the God that doesn't need to change anything, just change you, and he changes everything. So we're going to, we're going to. If you desire it, God will transform your perspective today. And when he transforms your perspective, you will attack the world and see it change like he called you to. And become what God made you to be. Now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica where was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, I'm looking for that day when they say GL, as his manner was, just went to whatever kind of church he could find his way into. And then the next thing you know, Paul's preaching. Brand new church. He ain't scared. Huh? You read it in there. It happened. There was a synagogue of the Jews, and Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them. And three Sabbath days... Three church services, three get-togethers, reason with them out of the scriptures. Opening, that means explaining the scripture in their true sense, and alleging, meaning maintaining that it must be so, laying it down as a mandatory proposition that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, everybody say this Jesus. There was a lot of fellas named Jesus in that day. But there was only one of them that's this Jesus. Whom I preach unto you is Christ. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas and of the devout Greeks a great multitude and of the chief women, that's women of influence, not a few. I'm going to preach to you for a few moments tonight, today, maybe tonight by the time we get done, who knows. <laughs> Three services and the joy of the Holy Ghost. Three services and the joy of the Holy Ghost. God, I love you today. I do, I love you with all of my heart. I'm thankful I don't have to live one second of my life from now till the moment I die without you. I'm thankful, God, that I can live in your presence. I'm thankful I can live with the comfort of your word, the power of your spirit, the faith, and the constant 
knowing that you were there. You, you promised you would be. You said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You said you'd go with us all the way to the end of the world. Lord, we're going to have tribulation in the world. You told us that we would. We're going to have problems, difficulties, opposition, days we don't feel good, sickness, affliction. Any number of things are going to rise up in our life, and they have. But you're the God that never changes. So I pray, Lord, through this message, three services, and the joy of the Holy Ghost, that you transform our perspectives today. That's our desire. That's the, the, the pull of this message is we change the way we look at things because the power of the Holy Ghost transforms us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Thank you. Thessalonica, modern-day Thessaloniki in Greece. It was a port city, a city on the, the water, as it were, also strategically placed on the Via Ignatia, which was a major highway. And people of, of all backgrounds and all abilities and all lines of thinking passed by there, and therefore Thessalonica was a cosmopolitan city, to say the least, meaning that there was any, uh, whatever your flavor, you could find it in Thessalonica. The Apostle Paul went there intentionally to establish a church built upon the true message, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. For three Sabbath days, Paul goes into the Jewish synagogue and declares unto them that Jesus Christ was the Messiah, that his suffering had a purpose, and that purpose was to pay the sacrificial price demanded by their sins and also purchase their salvation and by virtue of his resurrection, he made that salvation available to whosoever will. Amen. Three services in the synagogue, and some of the Jews believed. A larger number of Greeks, or that's Gentiles when you read it in the New Testament, a larger number of Gentiles who were proselytes to Judaism, they believed, and several influential women also believed. Three services, what a revival they must have had. They were so powerful in presentation and practice that the larger group of Jews who didn't believe and were jealous of the response to this message, they gathered together a mob. Those that didn't believe gathered together a big mob of protesters and they went to the house where they thought that Paul and his team were staying. A man named Jason owned that house and he was suspected of aligning himself with Paul and Silas and, and, and their entourage as it were. And uh, he, he was a, a sympathizer, if you will, to this message of Jesus as the Messiah. And Paul and Silas are now hustled out of town by believers. They're fearful that they're going to try to kill them. And the, re the revival wasn't over, but three services and the power of the Holy Ghost have taken up residence in Thessalonica. So Paul and Silas leave, but the opposition doesn't stop. Can I get an amen from somebody? I thought if this would just happen that the opposition would stop. I thought if this would, if I just back off on this, if I just give up on this, if I just turn my eyes away from this, then the enemy would stop attacking me. But Paul and Silas are gone and the opposition didn't stop. Jason and certain brethren were taken by force before the rulers of the city. And they stayed there asking questions and enduring a, a very strict and strong uh, attack, as it were. And then, Brother David, they had to bond themselves out of jail and go back home. These three-week-old babies in the Lord have now become a part of what the enemy said is those that have turned their world upside down. A few months later, Paul and Silas, if you read the word, when, when, they, when they left Thessalonica, they went to Berea and these, these, this mob followed them to Berea and causing more problems for them and more opposition. And it seems like everywhere I turn, there's an enemy. It seems like everywhere I turn, there's an obstacle. It seemed like everywhere they turned, there was a, a block in their path. So they were pursued by unbelievers and found no way to get out. And then they said they wanted to come back to Thessalonica, but Paul clearly says that the powers of Satan hindered me from doing that. 
He wanted to go and encourage and further disciple this motley crew of young believers. So finally, when he says, I couldn't hold it anymore, I couldn't take it anymore, I, I feel a little bit of a connection with the Apostle Paul because he has raised up this young church of believers and, and undoubtedly they had a powerful move of the Holy Ghost. But, but then Paul and Silas had to leave and, and the opposition didn't stop and the persecution didn't stop and everything they tried to do for the Lord was met with animosity. And Paul has decided they probably ain't going to make it through the struggle. Ah, right, come on now. We know what it's like to start watching a new convert waiting until it gets so tough they can't take it no more. Huh? Paul was feeling the same thing. He had faith in these believers, but he knew what a tremendous attack of the enemy awaited them. He knew that that I feel the Holy Ghost, that a combination of life and the devil's trickery and the devil's enemy because he will make you think that he had power over your life. And it all seemed like it's coming from the enemy. And Paul was deeply concerned that this church at Thessalonica had not had time to grow and gain spiritual maturity and that they would be susceptible to the pressure of the opposition and the subsequent affliction and the subsequent pressure and the subsequent embattlement of the enemy's attacks that they would fall away from that they had believed concerning Jesus. Other versions describe Paul's possibilities like this. He was afraid that they might be unsettled, that they might be shaken, that they might be moved, they might be disturbed, they might lose hope, they might be discouraged, they might turn back, they might be unnerved by these afflictions, by this opposition or this persecution, etc. You see the Paul's picture. He doesn't know. He can't get on the internet and check out Facebook Live. He can't make a phone call. He's on the run from the enemy himself, Brother David. He's uh, under opposition and affliction. And I want to let somebody know, anybody that's full of the Holy Ghost and hungry for God and you're under opposition and affliction, just keep on pressing, baby, because the enemy don't like what you're doing. Oh, I'm going to preach this morning. We, we put it in grandma trying to just ease along. Grandma low, granny low, they call it. But we were going to put her in overdrive directly. Just get ready. Paul would have felt more secure if he would have had more time to establish them upon a foundation of unshakable truth and faith. But he only had three services. So he sends Timothy back. I need you to find out if they're even still holding on. Did they make it? Have they persevered? Have they endured? Somebody's about to get encouraged in the Holy Ghost. You think you know everything that's come against this church in the last six months. You don't know the half of it. You don't know the private battles that people are enduring in their families and in their homes and in their lives. You don't know about the dreams that have been shattered. You don't know about the calamities that have risen up in people's lives. You don't know just how worried hell is that we're going to rise up and become who God made us to be, who God called us to be. The enemy has been working overtime. He's got extra imps out after us, and our people are under attack. And sometimes we get scared they're not going to be able to hold on. He said, Timothy, go back and find out if there's even still a church there. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the anointing rising up in me right now. Go find out if they managed to endure. They faced a lot of heartache. They faced a lot of opposition. They faced a lot of affliction. It wasn't fair, some of it. It wasn't right. It wasn't justified. And we only had three services. So Timothy's going to find out how they are. And here's what he found. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse number 6. But now, everybody say now. now. When Timothy came from you unto us. You see, Timothy went and found out how things were going, and then he come back to let Paul know how they're going. He said, and he brought us good tidings of your faith and charity. 
That means faith and love, they have held on to it. And that ye have good remembrance of us. Here's what Paul had in his mind, that these people were gonna start thinking. Ever since we listened to what that Paul was preaching, we ain't had nothing but problems. Paul had decided that they were gonna turn on him and go back to their own way. But that was not the truth because this church told Timothy, they said, we can't wait to see Paul. We love Paul. We appreciate Paul because Paul preached the gospel to us. Paul preached the truth to us. And something's happened in our life that has changed us. He said, no, Paul, we haven't forgotten you. As a matter of fact, our affection towards you has grown. We desire greatly to see, and we desire greatly to see you or see us as we also see you. Therefore, Paul said in verse number seven, oh, I wish I could preach. Y'all better be glad I ain't feeling just on top of the world because it'd be on like a pot of neck bones this morning. Look at here. Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in, everybody say in, in all our affliction and our distress uh, by your faith. Uh, somebody hear me when I tell you. There's somebody watching you. Uh, there's somebody listening to your voice. Uh, there's somebody got their eye on you because they're going through hell and they're going through a struggle. And when they find out you can make it, uh, when they find out you're still holding on, uh, when they find out you're still triumphant, uh, it's going to give them something they need, uh, a shot in the arm, uh, and it's going to lift them up. Paul said the work was worth it. The struggle was not in vain. God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted above that which he will also not make a way of escape. Paul said, verse number eight, for now we live if you stand fast in the Lord. Our destiny is inextricably, eternally linked to you because if you made it through what you've been going through, if you persevere through what you've been going through, it means our work is not in vain. It means we didn't waste our time. It means that God is still faithful. Because if you can hold on and make it and keep standing through all you've been through, so can we. Oh, I ain't got started yet because it gets better. For what thanks? Can we render to God again for you? For all the joy. Everybody say the joy. joy. It was Nehemiah in his epistle or his writings about building the wall who declared the most powerful words uh, perhaps uh, in the Bible with regard to the Spirit of God when he said the joy of the Lord is my strength. For what thanks can we render to God again for you for all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before God. I love you people. I love you. I grieve over you. I pray over you. I would to God that we would move into an arena of where our joy is bouncing back and forth off of one another. Where iron sharpens iron. Where we edify one another and we lift one another up. Stop being shady. Stop being marginal. Stop trying to ride the fence. Stop trying to be something that you're not. And just lift your hands to the most holy God and say I ain't perfect but I want to be. I'm not complete but I want to be. I ain't made it but I'm going to. Let's stop quibbling and fussing and fighting and belly aching and moaning and arguing over stuff that don't amount to a hill of beans. Look at here. The active characteristics that Timothy found in the church at Thessalonica. Chapter 1 and verse number 3 said, And Paul remembered. Somebody hear me in the Holy Ghost right now. Paul was with them people for three weeks. Brother Chris, it wasn't much more than a good vacation that Paul spent in Thessalonica until the enemy, I feel the Holy Ghost, man, until the enemy rose up and ran him out of town. But the enemy, Brother Ronnie, did not take into account the impact of the joy of the Holy Ghost on a person's life. Look at here. He said, I remembered Ladies and gentlemen, I know there's some who don't like this, but you might as well start liking it. 
because I ain't going to stop preaching it. Listen, three weeks of services. They barely got on the books. Well, y'all better get ready, fellas. Three weeks of services. God don't have an issue with time. He's not operating on our clock or on our level of expectation. There are some men and women under the sound of my voice right now that the only reason that you have not burst into flame for the power of the Holy Ghost is you believe the lie the devil has told you and your friends have told you. I want you to know that the hand of God is on your life and you are anointed and you are called and you are empowered. Go to work. He said, I remember your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in Jesus Christ. They didn't receive, this is what's so powerful and important today. They did not receive the word of God in word only. They didn't receive the gospel in word only, but in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't mean to hurt your feelings, but you can't have your tear in your beer and the assurance of the Holy Ghost at the same time. I wish we did. I don't, maybe you got to the next part this morning, but I had some stuff wrote down. I was ready to bring it this morning. It's the recipe to being worry free, is recognizing who the Lord is and what He's done in your life. You ain't got time just to be consumed by things that might happen. It's been bad enough in real life. Come on, I'm not belittling or making light or jesting what anybody's going through. There have been some horrible things happen to people and like I said, you don't even know the half of it. But they're still here. But they're still standing. And there's something being formed in the hands of the almighty God. The enemy has no power. I heard Max Licato, I read a book this week. He said, don't you know it's powerful that the Bible, when Peter, when the Lord tells Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you. That means, Brother Richard, that before Satan could get on Peter, he had to go ask the Lord's permission. And the Lord is only letting what happened to us uh, happen to us that's gonna make us better for him. Oh, I know we ain't clapping about it, but it's the truth. Paul was afraid that the Thessalonican church had give in. He was afraid that they weren't going to be able to persevere. But not only had they persevered, but they had grown. And they had gotten stronger. And they had gotten more effective. And what the enemy meant for bad, God had used it for his good. Because Paul might have been gone, but the Lord Jesus Christ, God Almighty, was still in place. I know this ain't popular. But I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Satan has desired to have you. And it's gotten so tough that some of us are wondering if it's going to be that way or not. They've become followers of Paul and Silas and Timothy and of the Lord. They become disciples. First Thessalonians chapter 1 and 6. Here we go. And ye became followers of us. Everybody say three weeks. Three weeks. <laughs> Brother David, when the Lord's got a plan, if there ain't enough time, he'll back the clock up till there is time. He ain't worried about time. I want you to hear me something. Some of you old geezers and you old buzzards uh, that you think your time is done, your time is shot. Baby, you ain't even got started yet on what God's going to get you. I'm ready for the Holy Ghost to reach down into some 80-year-olds uh, and 90-year-olds uh, and something shake you loose uh, from your retirement mentality and realize uh, you still got something left for the kingdom. We're still better with you here. We still need you. And God is not done with you yet. I think the only ones clapping right then was the young people. He said, 
you become followers of us and of the Lord. Having received the word, y'all ready for this? In much affliction. It was right in the middle of their mess that a word came from heaven. Here's what's got to happen. Your perspective has got to be transformed. I know I say this a lot, but we live it a lot. Y'all laugh at me, but we live it a lot. You go into the bathroom and you turn the shower on where can't nobody hear you, and you sing this song, gloom, despair, and agony on me. Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. If it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Come on, we show up to the house of God with our lip dragging the ground. I'm just telling you. I'm not belittling what you're going through. I am not. I'm not minimizing what you're going through. I weep with you. I grieve with you. I can't eat because of what you're going through. I can't sleep because of what you're going through. I'm not minimizing or belittling what you're going through, but I am coming preaching a message that you need to just look up your eyes to the heavens and tell the Lord, I'm ready to have my perspective changed around. I know I can't change what's happened. I know I can't change what we're going through. I know I can't change what we're struggling with, so I need you to change me because I know that the hand of the Lord is upon my life, and I know I've got the Spirit of God down within me and I heard the preacher say you got a purpose for my life and you got a plan for my life and I shall not die but live and declare the work of the Lord I got to tell you the truth I thought this might go better than this I about ain't got no gas one of y'all ready to pick up take the baton Austin said he is you better be careful I'll give it to you Having received the word in much affliction with, with joy of the Holy Ghost. I don't have time to break it all down for you, but you read in your Bible when it says, and they're talking about you in Macedonia and Achaia. So I started looking. I started looking. I wanted to find where Macedonia and Achaia was. And you know what I found out, Brother David? It is synonymous. It has become a figure of speech to represent the entire country of Greece. So these people received the Holy Ghost. They repented and they were baptized. And they got three weeks worth of preaching. And when Timothy shows back up, you know what he's found? Not only have they stood, but they didn't circle the wagons. But they hitched the team to them and they cracked the whip over them. And they've been impacting their entire world. Think about how powerful it is that even the great apostle Paul said three weeks, ain't no way these people held on. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost so strong in this room right now. There ain't no way they made it through all that they've been going through with only three weeks of services. With only three three services, there ain't no way they made it. Oh, surprise. Not only have they made it, but this little church at Thessalonica has impacted their entire country. They're being talked about all over the country. When Timothy showed up, everybody was saying, you hear about Thessalonica? Did you hear about them people at Thessalonica? Oh, my goodness, they're setting the world on fire. If you only knew what I was going to be, after the storm, you wouldn't have never bothered me. <laughs> if you only knew what I was going to be. You see, I can't change your problems. If I could, I'd have done prayed them away. If I could, I'd have done fasted them away. If we could, we'd have done sung them away, but they're there. But God came today to transform your perspective. It's not going to beat you. It's not going to kill you. It's not going to destroy you. Look at what he says in 1 Thessalonians 2 and 13. And I think, I, Sister Heidi, I think I've skipped a bunch of notes, but it's all good in the neighborhood. 1 Thessalonians 2 and 13. Please hear this. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. 
Because when you received the word of God which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. When Paul preached to them, they did not receive the words that he was preaching as the words of man, but as the words of God. And when they received it as the word of God, God proved it in them by effectively working through them. They were born again in the middle of opposition, persecution, and affliction. But they got a hold of a word of God that fueled them, fortified them, and established them, and then launched them. And the opposition didn't hinder them, but it helped them. The opposition didn't hurt them, but it helped them. The enemy did not have the power to squash out a three-week-old church. Instead, it grew. He wouldn't have brought you to these trials if he hadn't already given you what you needed to make them through these trials. These obstacles of spirit, soul, and body, they aren't small nor inconsequential. They hurt. and They left marks and scars that will never heal. I said they hurt. And they've left marks and scars on us that will never heal. But look at this, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 1 through verse number 12 in the New Living Translation. Timothy, my dear son, you come to the music, baby. Be strong through the grace that God gives you in Christ Jesus. I want you to look at that real closely. Be strong through the grace that God gives you in Christ Jesus. Baby, he didn't give you grace just to save you. He gave you grace to keep you saved. Be strong. Be strong through the grace that God gives you in Christ Jesus. He said, you have heard me teach things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now teach these truths to other trustworthy people who will be able to pass them on to others. Verse 3, endure suffering along with me as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. He said soldiers don't get tied up in the affairs of civilian life. For then they cannot please the officer who enlisted them. And athletes cannot win the prize unless they follow the rules. And hardworking farmers should be the first to enjoy the fruit of their labor. Think about what I'm saying, verse 7. The Lord will help you understand all these things. Always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. This is the good news I preach. Look at verse 9. And because I preach this good news, I am suffering and I have been chained like a criminal. But the word of God cannot be chained. Verse 10. So I am willing to endure anything if it will bring salvation and eternal glory in Christ Jesus to those God has chosen. This is a trustworthy saying. If we die with him, we will also live with him. If we endure hardship, we will reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful. And somebody ought to get excited about that when you've been unfaithful. Brother Shannon, he's still I am. For he cannot deny who he is. Verse 19. But God's truth stands firm like a foundation stone with this inscription. 
the Lord knows those who are his. And all who belong to the Lord must turn away from evil. In a wealthy home, some utensils are made of gold and silver and some are made of wood and clay. The expensive utensils are used for special occasions and the cheap ones are for everyday use. If you keep yourself pure. Oh, I ain't been lying. I ain't been cussing. I ain't been stealing. I ain't been cheating. That ain't what he's worried about. What he's worried about messing you up is getting bitter over the things that you've had to go through. Recently, I got to tell you, my flesh didn't handle this right at first. Somebody come, used to come to church here last week, I guess, week before last. I wish I, if I had my phone still, I'd show you the text messages I got from them. Brother David, I preached a message called what thou doest do quickly about Judas leaving the presence of the Lord to go find his own way. The first text message said, I know that word was for me today. The second text message said, I'm going to go my own way. I know you think I've messed up. I know you think I'm going to do wrong. I'm going to regret it. But if I have, so be it. Last week, week before last they ran into somebody from our church and said what did I do to deserve this exact words ain't that right what, what did I do to deserve this what did I do to deserve all this to happen to me you didn't keep yourself pure you didn't stay sober and vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. I don't want to hurt your feelings. I, I don't want to hurt your feelings. But we got some people in here that have been through hell. We got some people that have been through things that you and I can't fathom. But they stand it. And Paul... Brother David, I don't think we're quite getting it. Paul said, you three-week-old believers, I only had three weeks with you, but you've inspired me to hold on through my affliction. You've inspired me to keep going through what's been struggling with me. Brother Larry, ain't that crazy? When, when we, our perspective has always been, ain't that cute? Look at them. Or... Get together with five or six people and say, there ain't no way they're going to make it through this. There ain't no way they're going to hold on. There ain't no way they're going to live for God. And then when they don't, it's like, I knew it was coming. I told you, they just couldn't make it. Maybe they didn't make it because you didn't make it. We have a responsibility to the kingdom of God to allow our perspective to be transformed. Say, you ain't been through nothing, preacher. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I'm going through now. Because everything you're going through, I'm going through it with you. I've been to the cemetery so many times that I have to watch and make sure ain't nobody following me think I'm some kind of creep stealing stuff. That's not a joke, it's the truth. Crying and grieving. Laying awake at night. I, I'm, not, I'm not begging for sympathy. It's, I ask for it. But we got people in here that I hear from on the phone and I hear them weep and I hear them cry and I see their faces and you don't even know what they've been through. Yeah. They're not giving up. They're not going back. Because three services in the joy of the Holy Ghost is enough to keep you till Jesus comes. I'm 
thinking of a song, boy, Sister Stacy used to sing it with the sounds of praise. Have you felt like giving up lately? Is your head hung toward the ground? Remember that? I cry out today with every fiber of my being. You're not tough enough to go at it on your own. Don't walk back. Don't go away. It's been hard. It's been tough. But God's hand is on your life. And you're going to make it. Not only are you going to make it, you're going to thrive in it. You're going to, the hell is not going to know what to do with you. The Lord knows those who are his. If you keep yourself pure, you will be a special, stand with me, utensil, utensil for honorable use. Your life will be clean and you will be ready. I said you will be ready for the master to use you for every good work. My wife's about to sing. She recruited some help, looks like. Maybe they're going to sing. I'm not sure how it's going to happen. I got nothing else to say. Paul said, I didn't think you were going to hold on. Not only did they hold on, Brother Shannon, but they thrived. They flourished. I, I didn't preach this, but in a later place, Paul says, he says, guess what? Y'all got so good at doing what you do, I don't have to come back here because you're doing what I would do. You're serving your community just like I would. Brother Ronnie, he didn't have to go back to Thessalonica because they were doing what Paul would do in the first place. My sleep is gone, my heart is full of sorrow. I can't believe. I can't believe. How much I've let you down. How much I've let you down. I dread the pain that waits for me tomorrow. When the sun
that song. I love what it says. Lord, I'll serve you for the rest of my life. Brings me back to the conversation that I had with a guy yesterday as we was on the golf course. And we was kind of talking about the Lord. And I just told him, I said, man, I can't see myself living a, any other life than what I live. Just living for the Lord and serving him. Whatever that looks like, whatever he calls me to do, whatever it is, I just want to serve him. I want to be a helping hand for somebody else. That's all I want to do. That's all I want to do. I love the Lord and I love what he's doing in this church. I love for the lives that he's changing. He's just so good. He's been good to me. Got so much to be thankful. We're going to go into the announcements right now. We got ladies' prayers this Monday night at 6.30. Any lady, just show up. I know as for the men, that it's always a good good meeting for us, so I know it will be the same for y'all. Uh, sister drawing, secret sister drawing today. Uh, cle cle uh, church cleaning this week is team nine. Brother Cody, Sister Callie, and Sister Courtney. There will be a memorial service for Sister Fran's mother, Miss Carol. Please, please be watching for the uh, arrangements. And let's let's pray for them this week. Let's just send prayers out. They have lost so much. And we just need to stand in the gap for them, just to be there, encouraging them, and just let them know that we care for them. It's what they need right now. They need us. Uh, NAYC is July the 26th. And the 28th in St. Louis at the Dome. More info is coming later. Senior high camp is this week. Uh, leaving the church at 10 a.m. Tuesday. Summer day camp available for children's uh, K through 4th grade, June the 19th and July the 28th. Uh, this is, uh, I guess, it's the YMCA Southeast Missouri. The waiting is finally, finally over. We are extremely excited to announce that, that we will be bringing a summer day camp option to the New Madras. Summer Blast will be offered them days. So just uh, look into that. And do we have any birthdays or anniversaries this week? Any birthdays? Stand and say happy birthday. A happy birthday. 